This is chapter 4, Oligopoly. For this course, we focus on a simpler case where there are only two firms, in which case we call it uh, duopoly. All right? uh, in this chapter, uh, there are four main uh, topics that you should clear. The first one, well, the first three are sort of specific models of duopoly. Uh, the first model we're going to talk about is Cournot. The second one is Stekelberg. And then the third one is the Bertrand. These are pretty standard duopoly models. I mean, they are standard oligopoly models. But as I said, for this course, we're going to talk about uh, two firm cases. All right. And then the fourth topic is the cartel. The, 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 the case where the firms get together, collude, and act like a monopolist. And then we're going to discuss um, that their profit would be higher if they actually collude, but the collusion is usually not sustainable, and, and the reasons why this is the case. All right, so these four topics are the key takeaways of this chapter. In this video, I'm going to give a sort of a very rough review. And then starting with the next video, I'm, I'm, I'm going to talk um, the Cournot, Stekelberg, Bertrand, and finally the uh, cartel. So, as I said, in all these three competitions, these are specific models. So you have to be clear about the model specific assumptions. So all three assumes, I mean, all four will assume that there are two firms. However, those models differ mainly because the firm's strategies are different. All right. So in the Cournot, uh, strategies and the timing of the competition is different. You'll see. So in the Cournot, for example, firms only choose quantities. All right. And they act simultaneously. Uh, when we talk about game theory, I will underline and explain in more detail what we mean by simultaneous move game, extensive form games. But the idea of simultaneous move game is that the firms, you can take it literally, um, choose their quantities, strategies, at the same time. But we usually do not take that simultaneity literally. It basically means when the firms choose their strategies, they don't know the choice of their opponents. All right. So when I take an action, when I choose my strategy, I don't know what action you took. All right. So I'm basically taking an action without knowing your action. So that's what we mean by simultaneous move. In the Stekelberg, firms again choose quantity. Oops, quantity. And however, um, the move is sequential. Which means one firm is going to choose an action, a strategy. The other firm will observe that choice and move accordingly. All right. Both of those competitions make sense. In the Stekelberg competition, you can think of like Apple uh, releases a new cell phone and then Samsung observes this action and releases another uh, a model, for example. All right. So there is this, uh, you know, the sequential move uh, in the competition. In the Cournot, well, once again, it's like sometimes the firms, uh, when they choose their actions, they may not know the actions of their opponents. All right. So the, 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 the release of the new phone is not, uh, the release date is not announced, for example. And so you have to make a decision today, you know, how much to produce and what to produce. Well, in the Bertrand, however, the firms choose price rather than quantity. All right. And they choose their actions strategies again, simultaneously. All right. So there is no sequential move. Um, well, you may wonder is that why the choice of price and choice of quantity matter? I mean, aren't those, you know, firms, I mean, aren't those models where the firms have some monopoly power? Yes, 
These are not perfectly competitive markets, obviously. There are two firms, so the firms have the power to influence the market price and, you know, the total quantity. Um, however, you know, the, the, the quantity and the price choices are not uh, independent, right? Uh, when you and I, so the, the two firms, when, when we choose our quantities, um, well, if we want to sell all those quantities, the, we, the, the price, the market price should be parallel to what the demand curve uh, sort of uh, suggests. All right. So for that reason, our price choice and quantity choices are in fact related. In a sense, you know, in the, uh, in the monopoly problem, for example, that's what we did. We assumed that the, I mean, we solved the optimization problem in such a way that the monopolist actually chooses quantity and then determines the price according to the demand curve. Um, so basically just charges the uh, market clearing price. So it's not really a choice, right? So the choice is quantity directly, but indirectly the, the price is determined by the demand curve. So similarly here in the Cournot and in the Steckelberg, firms actually choose their quantities and then price will follow according to the demand curve. In the Bertrand competition, however, the firms do not choose the quantities, they choose the price. Well, how those models differ in terms of, I mean, how, 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 how can we relate those assumptions in terms of in the real life situations? Well, sometimes uh, in the Bertrand, for example, it assumes that the firms can uh, change their quantities um, so easily, all right? Um, whether I charge a very low price or a very high price, the market clearing quantity, I can easily produce or supply that because the production of this good is easy or I have a bundle of goods maybe, all right? So therefore, my priority decision is about the market price rather than how much quantity to produce. All right, so I just set the price and then the market will determine how much quantity demand and so I'm going to supply that easily. However, in some situations, supplying the product isn't that easy. For example, um, think of the Cournot and the Stuckelberg models as uh, producing or choosing capacity, all right? Capacity. So let's say you're going to build, a, a, you're going to s open a hotel or a hospital or a school. So the capacity, the quantity is basically how many patients um, you can basically uh, accommodate per hour, per day, or how many, um, again, if it is a hotel, how many uh, customers you can, uh, I mean, can, can stay in your hotel. So the, the number of rooms in a sense is the quantity. If it is a school, the how many classrooms, how many students can sit. And so these are, quantity choices, the capacity choices, and they're not easily, um, I mean, you can't easily change them, right? So you can't build a, uh, you, you can't build a school and then uh, choose a price. And then if there is an excess demand, well, how am I going to fulfill this demand? Because there isn't enough space, right? So there, my priority is actually the capacity, the quantity. So I, I choose the quantity and then let the market clear uh, so the demand curve will determine the price accordingly. All right? So, once again, in the Cournot and Steckelberg, the focus of the firms is the quantity choice. All right? And so the price will follow through the demand. And the only difference between Cournot, the only difference between Cournot and Steckelberg is that the, in the Cournot, we choose at the same time. In the Steckelberg, there is this sequential move. So I choose first, and then the second guy observes me and then chooses second. And in the Bertrand, this time the strategy changes. It's the price that uh, firms choose. Um, however, they choose simultaneously. All right? Well, in the cartel, you'll see it's uh, slightly different. Well, I mean, it's going to be a Cournot. Uh, and then so the, the base model will be Cournot. And then we're going to ask, well, what if the firms actually act like a monopolist? And then uh, make the comparison with the Cournot. Okay? So this is it for this video. So starting with the next video, I'm going to talk about those three uh, uh, duopoly models.